Boy, if you guys saw the way I got this camera nigga rig today, let me show y'all real fast. <laughs> I left my stand. I left my stand in the office. I was just like, I'm not going back up there. We gonna have to make it work. And perfect, as long as I don't move too much, I think it's gonna stay put. I say I'm gonna take some time off, y'all. All the cashiers, they was like, somebody stole a truck. It's like, you can hear it all throughout the store. This rock's coming to you today with the review for Love & Marriage Detroit, Love & Marriage Huntsville, our book four, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let's get to it, shall we? Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and hey, today we are talking about Cowboy Carter. I don't usually review albums because I don't think that I am like a music reviewer like that, like that. I think the last album, I, <laughs> the only other album that I have reviewed on this channel was Beyonce's album, the surprise album that she did um, that was just called Beyonce. Remember how much we loved that album, at least I did. That was one of my favorite al albums of hers. Um, and, 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 but yeah, th this is not really my thing like that, like that, but I was just like Cowboy Carter with it being so much out of her genre that we are used to getting from Beyonce, uh, it being a country album. <laughs> I do one of these, you guys, because I don't know if, I don't know. I do one of these because I, I'm not sure if I would call it 100% country, not traditional country anyway. So I wrote down all my thoughts or typed it out and um, I was just like, okay, I'm going to give it to you guys how I feel. Now, let me just remind you all because I know some of you are, you know, you love Beyonce and I love Beyonce too. If I say something that might not agree with you, that's just my opinion and you're allowed to have your own opinion. You know, that that's all it is here. This gonna take a little minute. I hiss a lot of songs on this album, but uh, let's get to the review, shall we? All right, you guys, so Cowboy Carter came out on March 29th. That was last Friday, which was also Joseph's birthday. And it came out to mixed reviews. I was looking on social media to see what the people were saying. And uh, some people really loved it. And some people really hated it. And um, if you know, like I know, um, you can't really go by the opinions of others because you have on one hand, the extreme fan stands that love any and everything that Beyonce puts out. And then on the other hand, you have extreme haters of Beyonce that will hate anything. They ain't even heard the damn song. They just already like, why is everybody going on and on about Beyonce? It's all about Beyonce. Beyonce. And so you can't really judge the project by that. So what do you do? Well, you listen to the album yourself. Friday, I did try to listen to it, but Friday was crazy. It was Joe's birthday, like I said. Um, work was a bitch. Um, and I was trying to get that <laughs> Top of the Blogs extra up of, you know, about Puffy. I listened to a first couple of songs and I was just like, oh, okay, you know, but I didn't really give it a good listen. And then the weekend, it was a lot of shit going on, busy, never really got around to it. But yesterday, I was able to actually put it on the speaker and just listen to the album. And um, what I will say is I was pleasantly surprised, you guys. Kind of the same way that I felt about Renaissance. I don't know, I feel like, you know, you can tell that this is all a very cohesive sound of Beyonce's. Renaissance and this album actually sounds like they go together, even though the genres are very, very different. What I will say about country music, as I told you guys before, that it is really not my speed. I usually like all types of music, but country would probably land lower on the list. There's a lot of other genres that I can do before I would turn to country. But, like I said, pleasantly surprised with the album. I don't know if I would call it country. I actually smiled to myself because I looked at Apple Music to see what they had it as and it actually says country. But I, and I just was like, how is it that we get to name this? <laughs> I was just like, how did they come up with country? Because really honestly to me, you guys, it sounds like a Beyonce album with country music on it, with country undertones. Um, there's a lot of guitar, acoustic sounds. There's a lot of harmonies that you find in country music. Um, country music kind of slash folk music, you know, sort of like music that you would hear like in Germany, Oktoberfest. 
you know, if we didn't have like the driving beats and the, uh, not really driving beats, but if we didn't have like the country tones and beats to the, to the song, I could very easily say some of these songs would even remind me of folk music. Okay, with a little bit of pop t tinge to it. So this album is really a whole lot of things, not necessarily straight country. Like if you were thinking that you were about to put on like a Carrie Underwood and you was gonna get straight country or, you know, uh, why Nona? <laughs> if you was gonna put on like the Judds or something. Yeah, it's not quite that. I think there's like a lot of other influences within it which probably works out well because Beyonce, um, you know, she still has her fans that are diehard, like like the sound of Beyonce as an R&B artist or as a R&B slash pop artist. We've talked about this many times, how the genres now kind of blur the lines. And so you have country music that can kind of sound like pop music and you've got R&B music that can kind of sound like country music and you've got you know, rock music that also turns into pop music and all that. So they blur the lines and a lot of that happens in this album to me as well. But ultimately it sounds like a Beyonce album. It doesn't feel like you're going to put this on and you're gonna be so far outside of the of the original sound of Beyonce. Um, you're not gonna get that kind of feeling. Now Beyonce is singing much lower if you listen to like earlier albums of Beyonce, she used to sing extremely high, okay? Like extremely high. And now you can tell as she's getting older and more mature and her voice is really, really having like that, 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 um, well, I guess it would be like a mature sound for her. She sings low and I think that that's probably more comfortable for her as well. And like I said, the harmonies, which is very big in country music, the harmonies that she used in Renaissance. I don't know, I didn't really pay much attention to the harmonies that she used in Renaissance, but this album actually made me realize that she used a lot of harmonies in that first album of this trilogy that's coming. You know, the first act and now we're at the second act. Second act. Yeah, the harmonies is what makes this album beautiful. And um, you know, you can kind of listen to it and it sort of sucks you in, but Ultimately, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would call it a country album. Now, Beyonce to me doesn't really have a country voice. Um, it, it, so she doesn't have like that, even though she's quite country when she talks, you know, and I, I don't mean that in a bad way, but she is very much Texas, Houston. You can tell that she comes from the South. But I think that she was able to get the sound that she wanted because she is singing a little bit lower. And like I said, those harmonies kind of usher in that whole country sound, okay? <laughs> How many times I'm gonna say country? Y'all take a drink every time you hear me say it. But country folk, R&B, a little bit of pop thrown in there, you know, that's kind of how I feel about this album. I guess they couldn't really call it all of that. So we just we just settled on country, fine. And I love the fact that she made this album. I love the fact of the imagery of the album cover with her on the white horse, with the white hair, with the red, white, and blue there. Um, but of course, she is clearly a black woman. I know a lot of people saying that she made her skin lighter and, you know, whatever. Um, but she's clearly a black woman. We know Beyonce is a black woman and um, I just love the fact that she is making a lot of people uncomfortable. For a person that always wanted to make everybody happy, I mean she has said that herself, you know, she was a people pleaser. This is like a really good kind of spit in the eye, like, bitch, I'm here. I'm Beyonce, I'm doing country now. I love all the imagery. I love the fact that she's really sticking to that white hair. You know, a lot of people did not like it, including myself. I was just like, girl, what we doing? But now I get it, I get it, okay? It's all a part of the look. It's all a part of what she is trying to do. Project, it's all a part of the project, you guys. I mean, when Beyonce gets into the project, she gets 100% into it. So that was the introduction, you guys. Okay, so y'all ready? Okay, let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so I did it in the order of the track list, but I'm not talking about every song. Now, the first song, American Requiem, I love it. It does give me country slash rock. She's singing very low in that song and I love when I hear Beyonce's low voice. It feels like she's hugging the music, if, if that makes sense. I hate that saying. <laughs> 
she's really down in them notes low 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 and i feel like if we got a little bit more electric guitar in that song that it would start to swing more um rock the next song uh blackbird now blackbird is a beautiful song if you guys are familiar with that song it is a rolling stones song originally and um i loved she's singing it with some other girls i forgot to put their names down you guys but it's a trio i believe she's singing it with two other people and very very beautiful just a beautiful song no it's not a country song they use the acoustic guitar not much other musical instruments in there i mean there's other instruments but the guitar the acoustics of the guitar is what brings up to the forefront and um like i said if you know the rolling stone song it's a beautiful song all right but i don't it's not country 16 carriages we're familiar with that song that was one of the two songs that she released when she told us that she was coming out with this album we listened to the words of 16 carriages i think it's a very personal song to her talking about her you know when she was kind of sounding like she was about to have a nervous breakdown you know maybe five six years ago i love the way the song flows the cadence to me is very much uh um, country that kind of arrested that stop and go you know that's is slowed down much more than that but that is like a country that's a traditional country kind of sound that you've heard in the past <laughs> country one more time now texas hold em. definitely a country song okay even though the people would like to say that it is and i think that it has all the elements of a country song like the song i think it's a fun song i think that is something that you can get these line dances and everything too i know people were creating all these different dances for the song and it was just sort of like nigga y'all got a whole fucking routine i mean this ain't no <laughs> ain't nobody learning all that to be doing at a line dance you know club or something like you we just needed to be eight counts you know do something and turn around and do it and then turn around and do it you know but people was coming up with full routines i mean it was cute for tiktok and everything but i can see like a real actual line dance set up for that song it, to me, definitely a country sound. Bodyguard, that feels more like a pop rock song. You guys know that song, Smooth by um, Carlos Santana? This song, and that doesn't sound like that, but it, 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 it sounds like that. <laughs> like the music of that song, if you listen to it, the way that this song flows and the way the smooth flows, dun 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 or else forget about it. You know, it's like and that's kind of like the same sound that this song has. So Carlos Santana, nobody would call him country. I feel like that song also has a little bit of rock influence to it. But all you got to do is slow it down a little bit and you add a little, you know, traditional country type um, instruments to the song and then it kind of has that country sound <laughs> we'll come up with another word y'all smooth is one of my favorite songs by carlos santana like one of my favorite songs and so as soon as i heard that and i could hear the music in the background y'all just go listen to it and y'all let me know if it gives you that same sort of feel then jolene okay now jolene is the dolly parton classic it's been done and done and done by a lot of people maybe the only person that i can think of off the top of my head who did a very good job of of uh, jolene was miley cyrus miley cyrus has that low she has a very much country voice it was a no-brainer i think for beyonce to also sing this song um and you guys i'm just gonna say this she sounds great on the song you know she she sounds great on the song however i hate when people change the music of songs I, I, I mean change the words of songs but i get it it's beyonce you know she was gonna change up the words a little bit it pretty much keeps the same you know it's pretty much the same as the original but there are some tweaks to the song and i just usually generally don't like that i mean i don't even like when the, when a woman changes the words of a song that a man sang and so when the man is singing to a woman and he says you know to her or to she or he says whatever the words to go to her and then when a woman does it and they change it to as if they were singing to a man i don't like that like i just don't really like for people to touch classics if you're gonna touch a classic it needs to be the same 
that being said, she sounds great on Jolene. It's a good version of the song. Um, and if you're not really familiar with the original, then I don't think you would have any problems. Did you guys see the um, <laughs> the video that Dolly Parton did where she was talking about like it was a real experience, her and Jolene, um, and how Jolene was trying to take her man. She worked at the bank or something and she was trying to take her husband, her, her boy, her man. I'm not sure if they was married. And she went down there and <laughs> she said the girl almost beat her ass with her own wig. <laughs> but Dolly came out on top, obviously, because we don't know nothing about Miss Jolene except for the song. Now, the next song I like, Daughter, I can very much hear in a Western movie, like playing in the background. Like if you was watching um, um, Yellowstone or something, I could hear that song very easily. Yes, this song to me does sound very much country. And again, this is all my opinion because I'm not the connoisseur of country music. Take all that with a grain of salt, child. Just for fun, now I do like this song. Um, I love the guy Willie Jones. I, I don't know who he is. I'm assuming he's a big uh, country singer. Um, I love the, the sound of his voice. I just love it. That's what really makes you feel like you're listening to a country song. It's, Beyonce doesn't have country voice to me. So I think it was a good idea to have him on there to kind of bring it back around. Y'all y'all know what I mean? Now, Two Most Wanted, great song. Hands down, best song on the album. Okay, it's smack dab in the middle of the album. So it's just like one of those songs that you have to get to. Um, it was inter interesting the way that they did the track list because I think more of the stronger songs are in the middle of the album. The first couple of songs start off well, but then it gets a little, you know, whatever. And then that middle, those middle songs, yeah, this is a great song. Miley Cyrus's voice is pristine. Sounds so good, okay? And then with Beyonce on top of it, with her growl coming in every now and then, you know, that's something that she likes to do. And it all just fits so well. I was just like, this is a song that I can hear on the album. I can hear on the radio. Something that I actually would listen to. I thought it was a beautiful song done very, very well. They sound great together. Who would ever put Beyonce and Miley Cyrus together? It was a great idea. Um, out of all the other country girls that she could have used, I thought that Miley Cyrus was a good enough choice. And then Miley Cyrus, you know, she's... She also kind of goes against the grade. And so I think that, you know, them using Miley Cyrus was great. It's a it's the, a fabulous song, you guys. The best song on the album. Levi's Jeans, that song is with Post Malone. Um, I like that song. I actually think that song was, was good. Um, Post Malone, now I'm not really familiar with it. I mean, I know his music, you know, the ones that were his big hits and everything. I'm not a Post Malone listener. But he has a good singing voice. I was just like, okay, okay. Is he, what does he sing? Well, I thought that man rap. No, I guess maybe I didn't. Does he rap, child? Anyway, I did like that song. And then we have Yaya. Now this song has, um, these boots are made for walking. That's the music that's in the background. And it's a fun song. It is a classic Beyonce dance for the women songs, for the girls. You know, this is her girl song. Um, and so I can see this song probably getting pushed the same way that single ladies and, you know, her, her classic dance fun girl songs, you know, just going to put that song on and have a good time. That's what that song is. I like it. And you know, you like these boots are made for walking. Let's see. Desert Eagle. Well, Desert Eagle flat out to me when I hear the guitar, the bunk, 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 bunk. Okay, it sounds like tell me something good. Like I, as soon as I heard that, it sounds, it's, it's like, what do they call it? Like an interpolation. I feel like they used that very hard pluck of the guitar or the bass and used that kind of looped it, changed it a little bit and made it for this song. So I, this is another one of the songs that I really do like on the album. You guys listen to that song and tell me if you hear what I'm saying about the tell me something. <laughs> it's so funny I'm singing all these other songs because I don't really know the Beyonce songs. Somebody was just like, I hope you're singing on it. And I was like, child, I don't know none of these songs well enough to even attempt to sing. But I know tell me something good. <laughs>
<laughs> River Dance. Now that's not country, but it is the jam. And that's not really in the middle of the album. This is getting towards the end. Yeah, I, I did like that song. That is the jam, you guys. Tyrant. Now this is the song with Dolly Parton. I love Dolly Parton because I think Dolly Parton doesn't take herself extremely seriously. She's a girl's girl. She loves the fact that these women are singing her song, you know, and kind of reinventing herself over and over. I mean, Be um, Beyonce singing a Dolly Parton song is a no-brainer if you're going to be doing a country album. I do love the fact that Dolly allows this to happen. I mean, she doesn't have everybody singing her songs, but when she knows that someone is going to do her song and they're a powerhouse and they're going to do it right, you know, she's smart. So yeah, we like that song. Let's see, Sweet Honey Bucking, not country. That's, that's all I can say is, is not country. And then Amen. So Amen is kind of like wrapping up the whole project, kind of brings in the elements of American Requiem from the beginning, kind of closing it out at the end as well. Um, again, the harmonies are beautiful. It, it kind of, the harmonies in this album and even the album Renaissance, I'm starting to realize kind of remind me of like old, like Queen, like Bohemian Rhapsody. And you know how they would have like those harmonies that were so prevalent in their music. This, you can hear that very much in Beyonce's music, um, these last two projects. And what I will say about Beyonce's musicality is it's so much more mature and so much more involved if you go back and listen to like her first albums, you know, and this is how it should be anyway, as you get older, you don't sing the same way. But the first, her first albums and all that, the music was way more simple. Um, still the jams now, we still can listen to Dangerously in Love from the beginning to the end. But what I'm saying is now you can hear that it has matured, that there is so many more instruments, that just her harmonies on top of everything, it just sounds so much more grown up. And um, that's what I can appreciate about it. Like Beyonce continues to grow. And that's why I think that she is, you know, that people really do like her, um, you know, and respect her because she takes whatever she's doing seriously and she puts it out there and is just however she feels. And it's just like, you guys can either take it or leave it. She's at that point now where you don't, she doesn't care if you love it. I mean, I'm sure she wants you to, but if you don't, then that's okay as well. You can tell that this is a personal project to her. All of them damn tracks. There are some interludes. We got Willie Nelson on there, who's also kind of just like a, you know, sit back and relax and listen to the damn music kind of thing. And um, yeah, I just, I respect Beyonce because she's willing to take chances and she doesn't really care because she's already arrived. Like she's already there. So she can do whatever she wants. And um, that's what I love the most about these projects. Now, am I going to be listening to Cowboy Carter as like gonna be in rotation and everything? No, I don't think that. I didn't listen to Renaissance like that either. There were a few songs on there, you know, Cuff It, of course, you know, and other songs that had like, it was like perfect for the radio. And that's the song that I think that she has with Miley Cyrus. I think that is a song that will be perfect for the radio. But, um, you know, when I want to hear a certain sound, if I want to have something, then this is the album that I could see myself turning to. Um, so yeah, I like it about the same as I like Renaissance. Can you imagine if they did a concert of this? <laughs> a fucking concert would be five hours long. You guys remember how long Renaissance was because she had so much music on there. I mean, she basically sang every song from Renaissance in the concert. And then also, you know, put in some of her old music from her, further, from her former albums. And so now if you have a Cowboy Carter and the Rodeo Chitlin Circuit tour. Um, and if she sang a lot of these songs, because people would want to hear it, I guess if you were you know, buying tickets to go to this tour, you would want to hear these songs. And then also still wanting to hear Dangerously in Love and Ring the Alarm and you know, whatever other songs, you know, Partition and all of her other classics, then you would be there all night. Beyonce has a huge catalog of music. Sometimes I'll just put on um, I'll just tell Siri to just play Beyonce. And those songs will, it takes forever for them songs to loop around again because she has so much 
in her musical catalog. And um, I just I, I just respect the lady, okay? Not my favorite album from Beyonce, but um, I can respect it and it's something that I can listen to and just be like, okay, I, I, I like it, I like it, you know? Um, still my favorite album is probably, well, Beyonce, the surprise album, and then also, um, yeah, Dangerously in Love, like that, that album, her first album is still like top of the list to me, top of the list. But uh, yeah, you guys, that's it. Like I said, this is just my opinion. You know, I ain't no music person. I know I should have came up with something else. Kept on saying country. Let me know what you thought about the project. If you listen to it, if you haven't listened to it, maybe me giving you this review, maybe you'll go out and listen to it. But it's definitely worth the listen. Um, and again, not classic country by any means. I mean, you could hear pop, rock, country, Maybe a smidge of um, R&B, maybe a smidge, but all of that kind of mishmashes together. But if Beyonce say, damn it, it's a country album, then guess what, damn it, it's a country album. <laughs> Make sure that you thumbs up the video, comment, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm Roxanne, the channel is It's Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right, so I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars. Bye. I hope I didn't have lipstick on my teeth because this lipstick. <laughs> Bye, y'all.